Last night I practiced self-care by eating cinnamon toast crunch in bed and letting the sugar crumbs in my sheets exfoliate my legs. It's always cheese it crumbs for me. Them legs be feeling silky smooth. Five orange juicy show today. This celebrity egg girl admits what we've always known. She had a nose job. You will be irate when I tell you what pop culture outlets are now spreading around in order to play damage control about young people like Hailey Bieber suddenly having strokes. Pete Davidson didn't just get a tattoo that says Kim, he was branded and I'm like, why is nobody freaking out about this? Also, USA Today gets the honor of Freak of the Week. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Apparently, it's one of the most controversial things about me to conservatives, but I get Botox once in a while and I have lip filler. And it's never been something that I've tried to hide. I've always been open about it for years before I ever worked at Turning Point USA. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when celebrities pretend like they just woke up like this and have never had any work done because here, this is the thing. That is what is damaging to women. Wondering why everyone is perfect except you when the truth is the people who looked perfect or close to it, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because they paid for it, okay? Case in point, supermodel Bella Hadid. Clearly getting work done isn't the only thing she lied about. She pretends to drink coffee too. Basically, she's as fake as her fashion week French accent. Simone is the best and this collection was to die for, no? And we're celebrating pride. It was the best, best, best show of all time. Love you, see you. If homeboy is coming through with these, right. it's quiet. Yeah, no, right. it's quiet for him. But <laughs> like if he comes through in like these, yeah. After years of speculation from people, Bella admitted to Vogue that she got a nose job when she was 14 and expressed regret saying, I wish I had kept the nose of my ancestors. I think I would have grown into it. Bella's fans blame her mom, Yolanda Hadid, for this as she has done controversial things in the past, like telling Bella's sister Gigi to eat two almonds when she was hungry. I'm feeling really weak. I have like half almonds. I have a couple of almonds, chew them really well. Since Hailey Bieber had a tiny stroke at 25 out of nowhere, the story completely blew up and went viral. Naturally, you people are starting to ask questions. Obviously, one of the main theories floating around is it could be the juice maybe that caused this? Friends, what are you gonna step forward with a pair of bollocks and give me some f***ing honesty. But now, if you've paid close attention this week, pop culture outlets like People Magazine have been pumping out mysterious articles saying things like blood clots like Hailey Bieber's are happening in younger and younger people. And then they go on to say it's our fault because we live unhealthy lifestyles and have bad diets. Oh, wh wait a minute. Is it now acceptable to call out obesity again? Is fat phobia non-existent all of a sudden because we need to justify blood clots? You're forgetting something. No one's gonna draw any parallels between a bunch of people getting the same juice, and then a sudden spike in strokes and blood clots in an age group that typically has to not ever worry about it? They think you're stupid. Something smells fishy. <laughs> Damn straight, something smells fishy. Kim Kardashian went on Ellen and talked all about her and Pete in detail and revealed that he got her name branded on his skin. Yeah, he has a few tattoos, few cute ones, you know, that he got. Um, but this one is a, it's not that one, the Kim one isn't a tattoo. It's actually a branding like a branding because let me explain it because he wanted to do something that was really different there's a lot i want to say here number one can you imagine the absolute outrage if kanye would have gotten kim's name branded on him when they were together That's crazy. second of all did everyone just conveniently forget about the nexium cult branding something on yourself for another person is weird oh oh yes Yes! Oh! Everybody's getting sucked into how cute they are together, but you are forgetting that Pete Davidson has a very addictive personality to everything. He struggles with getting addicted to substances and women. That's a red flag. He immediately becomes infatuated with girls and goes zero to 60. Kim isn't the first girl that Pete has gotten tattoos for. Ariana Grande and Cassie David both have tributes on his body. That bar is just like a tattoo gets under your skin. Pete Davidson has admitted in an interview with Charlemagne the God that he's a cutter and that the reason he has so many tattoos is to cover up the scars from his chest after cutting himself. I mean, this guy is very publicly admitted to struggling hardcore with dangerous behavior. And people are like, let Kim have some fun. She's newly divorced. 
hours, just let her enjoy herself. I just don't see that as a viable option once you have kids. If you're gonna be dating someone once you're a mom, especially bringing them around your kids, I definitely think that they should be someone you could seriously see being permanent in their life. And I would say that Pete Davidson is nowhere near a healthy place where he could be a parent. I mean, whatever, I guess. Two pieces of movie and TV news I thought you'd want to know. Selena Gomez is developing a TV comedy spinoff of the beloved 1984 coming of age film 16 Candles that will be titled 15 Candles. The show will follow four young Latinas navigating feelings of invisibility while exploring what it means to leave childhood behind as quinceanera season approaches. What's happening, hot stuff? Latina cute servatives. Does this show sound like it could be cute to you? The other thing I want to tell you is that Sydney Sweeney, my girl, will be starring in her first Marvel movie, Madam Web, alongside Dakota Johnson. Are you excited about either of these announcements? <sighs> Before I tell you about the Freak of the Week, I want to remind you to apply for your spot to Turning Point USA's Young Women's Leadership Summit. It is a huge conservative conference for women in Dallas, Texas on June 2nd through 4th, and it's an opportunity to meet, network, and make friends with other cute conservatives from all over the country. We only have a certain amount of seats available, so if you wanna go, you gotta get in there ASAP. Go to tpusa.com slash YWLS and use code POPLITICS for 25% off. Okay, Ben, I hope you've warmed your pipes up. It's time to sing us in. I said certified freak. Freak. Seven days a week. Big round of applause for USA Today for winning the not so coveted prize of Freak of the Week on today's show. Why did they win the biggest foe of them all? Because they named the Woman of the Year and included Assistant Secretary of Health and Human Services, Rachel Levine, a biological man who was basically the Jabba the Hutt of the Jabba Juice. <laughs> It's amazing that for years, the main talking points from the left that have been drilled into girls are that we have to work extra hard to break the glass ceiling, right? We aren't represented enough in all these different industries and that we can grow up and be anything we want to be, except the USA Today Woman of the Year or the female champion of Jeopardy or the top swimmer in the NCAA or the Time Magazine Woman of the Year. We can be anything except nothing because a man who says he's a woman can just take our spot. Their activism is Bella Hadid's nose level fake. You think of women as disposable pleasures rather than meaningful pursuits. The first episode of season two of The Spillover is out now on Apple and Spotify with my friend, Ali Stuckey. We're talking about something she has never talked about in detail before, her birth stories and what went wrong in the very problematic and concerning statistics surrounding C-sections and inductions in the United States. The dark side of the birthing business is out now. Subscribe to The Spillover and leave a five-star review, please. Since the podcast is free, that is the one thing I ask you to do each week so that we will chart and that helps people discover the podcast. Heart this episode, do you think Pete getting Kim's name branded on him is cute or concerning? Also, what do you have to say about USA Today making Rachel Levine woman of the year or whatever, along with, you know, a bunch of all those other people that are not women that are winning women's categories? This is, I think, a great episode to post your stories and encourage people to watch politics that haven't before and make sure you hit the save button. We're back Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Support Poplitics, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show by subscribing to our channel, turning on notifications, and of course, hitting the thumbs up. Also, our main home is on Instagram, seriously. Just trust me, that's where the real magic happens. Follow us there, at Poplitics.